Now we are starting with a new chapter and this is chapter 7, the variational principle. Uh, earlier than this chapter, as you know that we covered the perturbation theory. Now why we covered the perturbation theory and now why we are covering the variational principle, let me explain you this thing in brief. The when if we are able to solve the Schrodinger wave equation exactly, then we don't need any perturbation, we don't need any variational principle. But the problem is that we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation for a given quantum mechanical system. And that's the reason we go toward the perturbation theory and we go toward the variational principle. Now, what we do actually in perturbation theory? In perturbation theory, we know the exact solution of energy, for example, energy of a system. And then we perturb a system a little bit, and then we find correction to that energy, to the new system, because now the new system is not the previous one or the old one, it's a new system. So what are their energies? We do some approximations. We derive the value of energy, we derive the value of wave function. Wave function means that it gives us the state of a system and then what is the energy of that system. While what we do in a variational principle, in variational principle we basically find an upper bound to the ground state energy of a system because ground state energy of a system is our goal means we want to determine the minimum energy of that system the minimum energy are the energy at which the system becomes stable which we call the ground state energy so the ground state energy of a system we can get by solving the Schrodinger wave equation and there are many almost most of the quantum mechanical system we remain unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation directly so we go first toward the variational principle we get an upper bound to the ground state energy means the ground state energy will be less than that value. So it is an upper bound to that. It cannot be greater than that one. This is called the upper bound. If we are having a quantum mechanical system for which we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation, then how to get the ground state energy of that system? How to get the energy of stability of that system we do a variational principle. Now what we do in a variational principle, we take a trial function, the trial function can be any function and we treat that function under the variational principle and we reach toward the ground state energy of that system. Now there will be some optimization in that one. The methodology will remain the same, the treatment will remain the same for optimization, we will work on the trial function. The most suitable trial function, if we get, we will get almost the exact ground state energy, although it is an approximation. So, with the variational principle, let's say, for example, we are having a quantum mechanical system about which I don't know what's the ground state energy of this system. So I will apply the variational principle for that I will take a suitable trial function and then I will go toward the upper bound of the ground state energy. And then with the help of perturbation theory, I will go to more exact solution because the perturbation is going to more exact solution than the variational principle. So the variational principle will first uh, find an approximate energy or the ground state energy of the system or 
the energy at which the system is considered stable. So the variational principle uh, and the perturbation together will, will help us to reach to the energy of the system and the state or the wave function of the system together when we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation directly. So these are the, the approximation we will go. Now the variational principle it is uh, used in uh, many uh, disciplines of physics like for example the it has a linkage with the perturbation theory it has a linkage with the Hadley-Fock method in which the same thing is used and even the density functional theory this method is applied in order to estimate the ground state or the stable energy of a system of an unknown system so that is why it is very important to study the variational principle keep the steps in mind that we take a trial function the more suitable will be the trial function the more good will be our result or our approximation so it's a kind of iterative method as well means the advanced uh, calculations uh, done with the computer it's in iterative method and we will reach the ground state energy and if our trial function is suitable then we will almost hit the exact value of the ground state energy so we start with this one now how uh, does this work means one thing we will have to keep in mind that this is applied when we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation and to get the psi of x from the Schrodinger wave equation now how does it work so the very first one we will pick any trial function any normalized trial function because the function is supposed to be normalized if it is not normalized we will have to normalize the trial function and then we will go for the ground state energy calculation ground state energy which we will represent here with EGS the ground state energy now the ground state energy of is equal the EGS will be less than or equal because it is in upper bound to this one psi H the Hamiltonian and psi. The psi that we have there means it is the expectation value, the average value or the mean value of the Hamiltonian. And the third one we will we will we will think of the suitable trial function the psi of x and that will help us to reach the ground state energy of an unknown system for which we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation means like when we consider the let's say for example Newton's second law of motion in classical mechanics and it is d square x over d t square then we solve for x of t and x of t basically gives us the state of that system. Here we are having the Schrodinger wave equation and this is also a second order differential equation. We solve the second order differential equation and we get psi of x. And psi of x is the wave function or the state of a system. So when we know the state of a system, we can 
we can calculate the energy of this system as well and this is a direct way to do the things now when we are unable to solve the Schrodinger wave equation then we will have to put some approximation and the very big approximation or the big hit is the variational principle and then with the help of perturbation theory we will go to the very exact solution so like perturbation is a refinement and variational principle is going to have that value now what about this one that if we take any trial function we reach to the ground state energy of a given system so this any world is very broad one we always look for a suitable trial function like for example we will consider here the harmonic oscillator situation the harmonic oscillator wave function is just like a Gaussian wave function so we will consider a general Gaussian uh, equation and then we will reach to the ground state energy of a harmonic oscillator so now to prove that this thing is fine uh, that this result that we have it will give us the right result let me show this thing 